But khair, nevertheless, if someone prays salah in the environment, in just the four walls of their house, who knows? Other than you and Allah, who knows what you are worshipping, who, who, what you are doing? So when someone says, Allahu Akbar, am I? Only Allah is watching, subhanallah. But okay, Shaykh Zakir, alhamdulillah, mentioned this ajeeb incident, Allahu Akbar, about this one person who buys a woman slave and she was known to be mental. So then, khair, he bore her because at that time it was very common slaves. Islam was the only mother that tried to abolish slavery. buy and you break it, set free a slave. You do something wrong, set free a slave. Setting free a slave, this much reward, this much ajr. So Islam was the only mother that done that. But nevertheless, this one person bought this one woman slave who was considered to be a bit dulali. So she and I, what happened after her responsibilities, she started performing salah. Now the slave master, he's fallen asleep and he wakes up and nevertheless he, he stumbles upon her and she's making this dua, Oh Allah, for the love that you have for me, so and so. Yani Allah, jo mohabbat, aap ke paas jo mere liye hai. So he's saying, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh slave woman, wouldn't it be better for you to say, Oh Allah, for the love I have for you. She say, by Allah ne mujh se mohabbat ki hai, tab to mujhe tahajjud ki tawfiq to diya hai. Allah loves me because He gave me the tawfiq for tahajjud. And then Allahu Akbar, look what she done now. That ikhlas, that's what I'm pointing out. She goes, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, now my and yours, our parda has been lifted. People know I make your ibadah. Ya Allah, ab dunya rehne ke kabili nahi hai. Allah to live in a dunya is no good anymore. Allah's qasam, she says shahada and died there and then. Ajeeb. Because that ikhlas with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this sincerity, I mentioned one more incident as well. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala an. Allahu Akbar, ajeeb insan subhanallah, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. He's one of the Ashrat al-Mubashara. Those people that were given the glad tidings of Jannah. And nevertheless, what happened was that he, Madain, Ghalib al Madain, he was making Fatah and he was uh, conquering Madain. And there was what, the king, he had a crown. And the crown was very, very valuable. Very valuable indeed. So much so, that just one of the jewels in the crown, one of the jewels within the crown was such, it was so valuable that someone could feed their entire generation in seven pushed. Seven generations, you could feed your family just on one jewel from the crown. One of the tabi'een, the history books don't know this person's name and we'll never know until Qiyamah. But nevertheless, one by one, people are bringing the, the spoils of war. Mali Ghanima, they're bringing in the spoils of war. Something again, which is the fadila for this ummah. Because uhillad li al ghanaim. The Prophet ﷺ mentions, for my ummah, Mali Ghanima is halal and jayz. So everyone was bringing the stuff. And some person comes, covered, he brings the crown of the king. Now just imagine, just put yourself in that position. You have got the whole crown, one jewel. Can you look who's left and right? And put it in the, with just one jewel. Seven generations. It's easy to say. Nowadays, how much would you need to feed seven generations? Think yourself. One jewel was such. Seven generations could eat. Now what happened? This person comes and puts the crown. We're talking about ikhlas. He starts walking away. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas says, Ya Rajul! Oh young, oh man! Who are you? He said, and he didn't even turn around, he, he's looking that way, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas ban he goes, listen to me. Jis shaks ke liye ye diya, o shaks mera naam janta hai. For the zaat and the being who I gave this crown for, he knows my name. He knows my name. So then he went. Until now, the historians don't know what this man's name was. But he will be mentioned until Qiyamah. Why? Because that ikhlas and that sincerity which he had in his heart. Ajeeb. So this is why a person to perform nafal salah in the home is better. Because... Because the environment is such, you know, your people around, Alhamdulillah, it's easy to make ibadah. But go home and see if you can make ibadah. It's not the same. It's not the same because now you go home, those brothers that are married, are they sisters listening? Not that I'm going to mention anything vulgar, but I was going to say, well, we women at home, Alhamdulillah, the warmth of the bed, but the comfort of the wife is there. And now to stand up with the musalla is difficult. We're not like Sahaba, like one Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala and we made his nikah. Now Dulan Bichari is waiting, that husband is going to come, he said, Khaljani you know, that what's going to happen next? He goes, just two rakats, I'm coming. And he went, Allahu Akbar, Allah's qasam, he didn't even stop until the Fajr Adhan. 
भाई बीवी पास हो मच यू फॉर योर सेल्फ इन अ प्रेडिकमेंट आई जस्ट गॉट मैरिड बॉडी बैठी होत है द वुमन इज वेटिंग एंड आई एम सेइंग अल्लाह नबी फाइंड अल्लाह अकबर वो लुक एट दीस पीपल बट दीस वर दोस पीपल दैट शुक द हार्ट्स ऑफ द किंग्स their sincerity their love that devotion with allah when they were allah akbar this is known as takbir tahrima tahrim in arabic harrama yuharimu tahrim means me me haram karna they made everything haram allah only you allah when we say allah everything comes in the mind everything and you perhaps heard of a very famous incident ajeeb allah akbar there was one imam sahab bichara he made a mistake in mistaking his salah he made a mistake and after he finished and everyone was saying mom sab teen rakat they were saying nahi bhai 4 3 4 3 there was this little ikhtilaf now one person said because imam sab be rest assured for guaranteed and i'm sab mashallah this is a very jurud ke sath because how do you know he goes the real baat ye hai na what the thing is i've got four shops in my first rakat i made hisab of the first shop second rakat second shop third third shop and fourth my hisab is complete your salah must be complete So this is our devotion. This is our devotion in in our in our time now. Up and down. This is our give kukuriya or they wanna done it. Well, like tick tick tick. This is our salah. Finish up and down. Bismillah. And then we say, "Ji, I have to pray for the prayer, but the prayer is not coming. By your salah is not of that level of the Sahaba. You may make dua to Allah, Ya Allah, I pray salah. But yeah, look at the value of your salah. Is it anywhere near the salah of the Sahaba? When you have you said Allah Hu Akbar and only you and Allah. He said the Sahabi mentioned Allah's qasam when I said Allahu Akbar I could see before me Jannah I could see before me Jannah so this is why even on the night of Sha'ban it's permissible to pray but it's more virtuous to pray at home because it's more difficult and if you can show Allah that I can worship you in the comfort of my own home subhanallah that goes to show that you are genuine in your ibadah but in addition to that as I mentioned you know about the women as well now the, some women what they do is that they get together and they have like bajamad namaz excuse me <coughs> they have bajamad and they they get together they establish a congregation a woman only congregation is not preferable anyway a woman i'm not saying women with men a woman only congregation is preferable in firadi not in the gathered gathered form we're not going to go into dalail now ajeeb this is because one now we're coming a time people are saying why can't women become imams and monana is a need the salah by muqtadi sanaz padhenge ya imam sahib ko dekhenge you know how see that's what i'm saying the muslim the mind is pure pure and we want to lead our sisters and mothers pure but khair that's another mauzu what we, we want to talk about is the validity of the praying is it correct or not and the preferable the preferable opinion is that women should pray in firadi this is more virtuous for them and to pray within the confines of their own home In terms of fard salah there's no doubt fard is something chupate nahi you don't keep it quiet because by you observing your fard someone else will observe their fard as well zakat when it comes to giving zakat you should give it openly alhamdulillah here this is my zakat because dusre bande dekh other people will look and say i am also going to give zakat as well but when it comes to optional things that's when you should be humble and be quiet about it because you don't have to do it by you showing people now you are showing, trying to show your excellence above the people If you do, if if anything is to be publicized, it's only the fard, and even then, you should not do it if you fear riya. By Allah ke baaste kariya logo ke liye, it's only jaiz. Understand this word clearly. It's only jaiz. Not that it's preferable or better to show people that you're giving your zakah. Is actually I'm contradicting my statement to a certain degree. If I'll explain to you the full masala now. I'm the chair di to chair di. How can I say that? If, for example, you know within a certain town or group of people, people are slack on giving their zakah. is more virtuous than for you to do it openly jab log pehle se karte hain then it's for you to can conceal it so you have to look at the mauka munasibat of your own areas but do i am i main isse kya kaam lena what am i trying to take from this is this one asool and that is for fard ibadah sometimes it's better to do it openly but praying salah but the kaula you should come to the masjid and pray salah with everybody but nafil salah is not like that nafil salah is something which is done at home quietly and even if you look at the sunnah of rasulullah he prayed them at home ulama have given ijaza it doesn't mean it's not the sunnah the sunnah is to pray the sunnah at home but we know our condition i'll walk inside and begum sahib will say ji le lo ji chai ji le lo dudh pati okawa le lo biscuit le lo 
you know, and then once are we going home, all the salah is gone. 